Continuing our conversation now, and Ambassador Rajai, I want to go to you, and I'm, you've confused me a little bit, I must say. You have used the phraseology that the Persian Gulf is still open, but you seem to set exceptions to that. Uh, you certainly uh, uh, include in those exceptions uh, Iraqi uh, ships, you talk about uh, Kuwaiti ships, you <coughs> warn American ships. I, I, I really am wondering what message specifically you're trying to, to convey to the principles that are involved, i.e. Iraq, Kuwait, and the United States? Well, you had the ambassador of Kuwait say that their ports facilities and their logistical uh, facilities are under the disposal of the Iraqis. Now, you may also know that their airspace as well as their uh, financial resources are again under the disposal of the Iraqis. The same ambassador mentioned that they also exert pressure on us they uh, make all means and methods available in order to uh, finish the war. I think this is exactly the meaning of taking side with the aggressor. I believe that if they believe that this is real impartiality, they could give their ports and their money and their logistical facilities to us and then also send their mediations to Iraq to, to end the war. Now, this is the, that, that's the exactly the meaning of impartiality, if that is uh, equally impartiality in both ways, then let us do it this way. Now, everybody understands what the uh, uh, Kuwaiti ambassador just mentioned. As for the closing and opening the Persian Gulf, there are two ways of putting it. You can say that the Persian Gulf is open, but some of these fleets are fighting others. You can say that the Persian Gulf is closed, and still nobody is fighting in the Persian Gulf. Closing the Persian Gulf is something, and continuing with a conflict in the Persian Gulf is something else. The idea is that the concept of closing the Persian Gulf is wrongly exploited in order to deceive the American public opinion. Nobody has closed the Persian Gulf. There is a war in the Persian Gulf, and some of the parties, literal states in the Persian Gulf, attack others. Now, the war is originally between Iran and Iraq. It is imposed upon us. We did not want the war. The war on land was imposed on us. The war at sea is imposed, in, imposed on us. The war in the air is also imposed on us. Now, if the Iraqis don't attack third party vessels which come to our shore, then we don't attack third party vessels we, whose, uh, let's say, revenues go to Iraq. The best way is to stop the war of the sea if they uh, feel that uh, the security of the Persian Gulf should be preserved. The security, the, of the, Persian Gulf, the right, security of the Persian Gulf cannot be divided. Either it exists for all of us, or it exists for none of us. All right, let me, stop, us. let me stop right. you on that point, because the UN Security Council yesterday passed a resolution which called for an immediate ceasefire. Uh, let me ask Ambassador Hamdoun, do you intend to honor that resolution? Yeah, I think we intend to honor that. Officially, the reaction will come in a few hours from Baghdad. But uh, I think that what's important here to point out to the comprehensiveness of the re resolution that calls for a ceasefire at an air and sea and land. And unless this is met, I don't think that one uh, should be selected to choose one side or one sector of the war where he has some advantage and to leave others without any advantage. In other words, you, so, in other words, you hear Ambassador Rajai saying that they are that if Iran would observe an air ceasefire. Uh, or attack uh, to a ceasefire on shipping uh, in the Gulf that Iran would do the same? Well, let them uh, withdraw from the Basra Port and give us the right to sail in the Gulf, then we will look into that proposal. Is, is we are there by geography and by history, it's not just by mere intentions of somebody who talks on behalf of the Iraqi people. We have never talked on behalf of the Iranian people. But what the ambassador is saying that here that he thinks that the Iraqi people uh, are against the situation and therefore he intend to uh, do something in their favor. Ambassador Rajai, do I, do I quote you correctly that you're saying that if, that if uh, Iraq would observe a ceasefire in terms of attack on shipping that you would do the same? That's exactly the case. Uh, Charlie, may I come in here for Yes, go ahead. Uh, Ambassador Khalistani referred to the Kuwaiti uh, opening their ports for, for, uh, for our ports for Iraq. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, the Iranians continuous refusal to accept ceasefire and its complete ignorance of or ignoring the United Nations Security Council's uh, resolutions which called for a ceasefire in the past. For these reasons, uh, Iran has continued to escalate this war and to further this war and with the intention of widening 
the whole war in the area. We hope that the Iranians now will uh, comply with the United Nations resolution or the Security Council resolution and have a ceasefire in the area. We all want to live in peace in the area. We are all Islamic neighboring countries. We wish to exist peacefully. We wish to exist friendly. And we wish, it, wish not to interfere, in, uh, interfere in the internal affairs of other nations in the area. This has been our main, main, main uh, concept and task. Ambassador Hamdoun, let me come back, though, to this point of a, of a partial, in effect, ceasefire. Ambassador Rajai is saying, you just said a moment ago, that you can't selectively take parts of this ceasefire. But is there a possibility of, of Iraq selectively honoring a ceasefire for an extended period of time and not attacking any shipping in the Gulf? No, I don't think that's, an, that's acceptable because uh, unless the war as a whole is stopped, uh, we cannot meet what uh, we consider an advantage to Iran. At the same time, keep the war going on land and to uh, not to use our advantage and air superiority to attack and reciprocation to the Iranian blockage of our territorial waters and our ports. We have never used the Gulf for the last seven years because of this Iranian blockade on our ports and territorial waters. I don't think it's fair really that Iraq be asked not to attack the Iranian territory which in water or in land makes no difference. Let me uh, ask Ambassador uh, El Sabah a question um, which goes to, there have been a lot of objections in the United States Congress to this reflagging proposition and there is great debate about the policy of reflagging in this country. This may indeed be a long-term proposition of United States protection of Kuwaiti ships. Do you anticipate that the United States is going to stay the course and will uh, protect your shipping for as long as it takes? We expect the United States to honor the commitments that we have and the only commitment that we do have with the United States is the registration of our ships under the U.S. flag. What the United States providing an escort, military uh, escort for the ships is a decision by the United States administration. Uh, of course, we've been following very carefully the debate that's been taking place in Congress and in the media about this subject. It's very healthy. I think it's airing the whole feelings in the United States about a new concept, a precedent to such a, an idea that is taking place in the Gulf. Uh, having said that, the situation, I think, uh, is critical. There are risks involved, which uh, have been repeated by many U.S. administration officials. And let's hope that the party which is posing this threat, posing this risk, will refrain from such acts of aggression against tankers coming to and from Kuwait and uh, behave in a manner which is compatible with international behavior. Ambassador Rajai, let me, uh, we're going to close this off, but let me give you the last word. Thank you very much. I believe that if the Kuwaitis want to be safe, they should keep themselves apart and detached from this war. That's the safest thing. As for the security of the Persian Gulf, I believe that the security of the Persian Gulf is the uh, uh, duty of the uh, uh, literal states of the Persian Gulf. We are strongly against the uh, uh, presence of foreign forces, whether Russians or Americans or French or English or anybody, in the Persian Gulf. We believe that the uh, Persian Gulf countries can maintain the security of the region. There is no need to invite foreign forces and to uh, uh, increase the uh, uh, danger of the escalation of the war, conflicts and uh, mistakes can happen as you remember uh, your uh, 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 ship was attacked by uh, an Iraqi airplane and the same mistake can be repeated the safest thing is to keep the foreign forces out of the Persian Gulf this is the right policy uh, it is the right policy always before the war, after the war, before the revolution, after the revolution and this should be observed by other literal states of the Persian Gulf. If they want to uh, bring other forces in the Persian Gulf, I think they are a part of the problem and not a part of the solution. I come in, may I just yes, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. He's raised a number of points and I'll let you go. Yes, sure. I'll let me give yes, you... Yes, Charlie. Uh, I, I agree with, with, with the, some points that were raised by Ambassador Khalasani that the security of the Gulf is the responsibility of the literal states. That is, that is a given fact and we have always maintained this policy. But who is uh, escalating this war to a stage where it's enclaving the uh, other literal states in this conflict. And we have made it very clear that we do not wish to be a party to this war, and we want to maintain a friendly relations with both warring factions. The uh, situation that is arising now are 
uh, naval vessels from foreign nations coming into international waters. There are not bases or facilities per se in the littoral states. We well, cannot prevent international military vessels sailing through the straits and in, in international waters on the high seas. And this is the arrangement that is taking place. Uh, okay. I think, Ambassador Khalasani, we agree entirely that the situation should be kept within the littoral states. But they are leaving no choice for us except to, to, uh, to seek the assistance of the international community, including the United States, to put an end to this war. All right, and, and just to be fair, let me go to Ambassador Hamdoun then, yeah, finally. And then I, we'll I believe that Iran wants the Gulf to be an Iranian lake, that everybody else should have no right to decide what to do and what to handle, and that uh, the only country that has the right to impose its own views on Kuwait or others is Iran. In fact, Kuwait is not the only country that gives us this kind of support. L most of the Gulf states are giving us about the same thing. And I believe if the Iranian argument is to be accepted on Kuwait, then Iran could have the same right to address to countries like Saudi Arabia or Bahrain or UAE. So uh, based on that, I believe that the Iranian argument here is totally unvalid. All right, let me thank all three of you for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, Ambassador al Sabah from Kuwait, Ambassador Hamdoun from uh, Iraq, and Ambassador Rajai from Iran. Thank you all three for joining us this evening. That is our report for tonight. I'm Charles Gibson in Washington, and for all of us here at ABC News, Good night. This has been ABC News Nightline. If you wish a printed transcript of this or any Nightline broadcast, please send $3 to Nightline Transcripts, 2 John Street, New York, New York, 10038. Nightline is a presentation of ABC News.